Hello, 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 darlings. Welcome to April 2022 and welcome to your horoscope for April 2022. April 2022 is a mother effing life changing month, okay? You do not want to miss your horoscope for this month and make sure to send this to every single person you know because they need to be checking their horoscope for this month too. There is a lot a lot a lot a lot starting in april so you do not want to miss out my name is tony michelle if you are new here i am a practicing astrologer tropical hellenistic astrologer a spiritual mentor i do a bunch of different things so if that is your vibe then make sure to subscribe before you leave we would love to have you and as always if you end up vibing with my energy if you feel like you really vibe with me and you want more from me then you can check out my patreon where i do exclusive Exclusive content. You can check out my website where I have courses, classes, one-on-one -on -one sessions, etc. I'm also going to be opening a few spots for one-on-one -on -one soul coaching. And then also I am launching a major effing program for getting completely aligned and to be the badass goddess that you are are okay and this program is coming in the next couple weeks so you definitely want to be on the lookout you definitely want to be paying attention having your notifications on i also post on instagram every single day so that is the easiest way to keep up with me let's go ahead and get into the sign readings for april 2022 comment your sign down below let me know what your signs are and if these readings resonate i would love to know as always and let's get into it Alrighty, Aries, starting with you, if you're an Aries rising, this will resonate most for you, but you may find some messages in here if you are an Aries sun rising, or I'm sorry, sun, moon, whatever, you know what I mean. But anyways, so Aries, this month in April, happy birthday, by the way, it is your birthday, biatch, so I hope you guys are just partying it up and living your life and literally stepping into your power for this year ahead. This is a very powerful year. There are so many things possible and I'm not just saying that because I'm some cringy reader on the internet that is here to say a bunch of things to make you feel good about yourself. Like, no, I am saying that because seriously, this is a year where miracles can fucking happen for you, okay? Jupiter is moving into your sign, not this month, but next month, okay? But uh, there are big fucking things coming for you. And so if you've been feeling like you are on the edge of something, like you are literally on the edge of a cliff and it's like, oh my God, this is so new and this is so big and I don't know what it is, but something's coming. Like, yes, okay, yes. Soak up that energy, tap into what you want, get clear about what you want, get clear about what you desire and get clear about what needs to be healed, purged and let go of. Because April is a month where a lot of these 12th house Piscean transits that you've been going through are really kind of coming to a head. And so in your birthday month, it's like you are releasing and closing out massive cycles. You are integrating, you are transcending, you are letting go, you are surrendering. Surrendering is the name of the game here, Aries, and it's going to be a little bit difficult, but once you surrender is actually when you receive, and that's the thing. And so your first week of April, you're probably gonna notice some rough spots happening in terms of friends, your social life, your networking, like like certain commitments, or you could be very, very uh, motivated to start new commitments, start new long-term commitments with different types of people, with certain networks that you're involved with, certain groups that you're involved with, certain like-minded people in your life. You could be very driven to like, really set the tone for something to do something really big on like a collective scale like you could be feeling like you have this bigger calling you know like this calling to really do something that's going to shake something up or cause a ripple effect and that happens when you stop living in the fear of what's going on in the world and you start tapping into the potential of what's going on in the world and that's really what sets people apart these days is that and i've said this over the last couple of months but there really are two different whole realities that you can live in right now you can live in the reality of the heaviness of the collective and all the fear and all of the all of the stuff right like carrying the world on your shoulders if you really want to or you can live in like the healing of it all right there's like literally two two pathways right now. You can either choose to heal or choose to live in fear, right? And it's kind of up to you. Like, which one do you want to do? Which one are, like, which one is more satisfying to you? Because living in the fear and living in the density, like, only gets you so far, 
right? Living in all of the problems of the world and carrying the world on your shoulders, carrying the world on your back, like that does not get you anywhere. And it pushes you into a state of fear where you're not thinking straight, which pushes you into a state of survival, which is exactly what caused a lot of these issues in the first place, right? Lack, scarcity, survival, etc. And so you've been really called to figure out how to accumulate an internal abundance, right? And with your ruling planet Mars being in Aquarius for the first couple weeks of April, you are going to, like right now, what's good for you is good for everybody. And so you have to keep that mindset right now. Like what is good for you is good for everybody. If you're not on the, if you're not in the right energy, if you're not in the right place, nothing else in your life is going to be in the right place. No one else in your life is going to be like, you can't help anyone. You cannot pour from an empty cup, right? I know that saying is so overused, right? I get it, but it's true. If you are scraping the bottom of your cup to get about a little bit out, or if your cup's filled with dirty, cloudy water, and like you keep trying to put clean water in it, you know what I mean? You're not getting anywhere right? Like because that clean water is mixing with the dirty water and then it's just dirty water again. And now you just have more dirty water. And so it's like, what do you really want, right? What do you really want to do? What is good for you? What desires do you have? This is like a rebirth. This is a time of rebirth for you, Aries. This month is a month of rebirth. And so the first couple weeks could be a little difficult. It could be really kind of bringing up certain sore spots, certain wounds, certain insecurities things where you feel like you're like lacking a little bit and you don't feel too great about yourself but that is getting brought up for you to see it and become aware of it and find a way to integrate that integrate it we have the two of cups in the sun right the two of cups is bringing something together integration right and the sun is healing and so for some of you this could also be healing or forgiveness with another person reconciling with another person or coming together with another person in your life in the first couple weeks of april and where you're becoming more aware right and i'm also getting like a massive childlike energy for you uh aries like tapping into that inner child tapping into what really fuels that fire inside of you like what really gives you passion what really like makes your stomach go, ooh, you know, like what brings you pleasure? Like that is what you need to be tapping into this month. And I really think it can get you through so, so much, okay? So we have a full moon in your opposite sign uh, around the 16th, which is definitely gonna be some major peak moments and relationships and commitments in your life. And so you're going to be seeing yourself from different angles. You're going to be seeing yourself in a new light or in a new way. And it's going to be a chance to really either, you know, reconcile something with another person in your life or a commitment in your life, or even let go of another commitment in your life. And so that is really what's going to be happening for you like mid month. And we'll also have your rolling planet Mars moving into Pisces mid month as well, your 12th. So the last couple weeks of the month with Mars and Pisces, it will definitely be a time where you're going inward. It's like you are full on diving inward because you realize that for you to get to where you want to go, for you to do what you want to do, you have to remove yourself from some situations. You have to let go of some things. You have to go inward, right? You have to dive deep into the feelings, dive deep into your subconscious, dive deep into the void and get her done. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to go through the emotions right you have to go through the healing the sacrifices right and so but jupiter and neptune are in pisces as well so i don't think it'll be too crazy at least like i think that it'll just it'll be a time where you are it's like the more healing that you do the more that you release the more that you take a step back and kind of seclude yourself to work this out, the more that you receive, the more that is granted, the more healing you're able to accomplish. And so I could really see you Aries, if you're an Aries rising this month towards the end of the month, like getting away, going on a retreat, going on a vacation, like doing something where you are very committed to something behind the scenes that is going to be extremely healing for you and extremely refreshing for you. 
as well. And you're gonna have a little bit of that like throughout the month, but especially the second half of the month, I feel here. But we also have the solar eclipse. Like this month is eclipse season at the very end of the month on the 30th. So we have the solar eclipse and your second house of money, resources, finances, you know, all of that stuff, your priorities. So that's gonna be a massive change there happening for you towards the end of the month. So definitely be on the lookout for that. It's, it's gonna be setting like a standard, right? It's gonna be like, this is what we're doing. This is, you know, this is where we're, how we're moving forward, how we're going about this. Um, there's gonna be a massive change coming in for you when it comes to your priorities, your money, what you have, your worth, all of these things, you know, are gonna be really big for you. And your cards really just imitate that. We have the Eight of Swords and the Queen of uh, Disc, actually. I thought it was the Queen of Cups for some reason. But basically, this is like, where have you been, where have you been kind of being a victim when it comes to making what you want happen in the physical and material world? What excuses have you had? What have, what's been holding you back? You know what I mean? What's been making you feel like you cannot bring this desire in? It's like you're already in the process of bringing it in. You already have what it takes. You are already worthy. But what excuses, what old mental shit is like holding you back? Because, you know, it's like you're you're living too much in your mind and not enough in your body, right? You're not fulfilling things because you have these mental excuses. And so this month is really bringing this to your attention. We also have the seven of wands and the king of discs. So it it seems to me like you finally pull yourself out of it, like against the odds, you know what I mean? Like at least like the second half of the month, you're like, okay, this is happening. I don't care if the odds are against me. Like you're just trusting, you're trusting that fire within you. And it's like, it pays off, right? It definitely pays off. And you're also learning major lessons in money when it comes to the foundations of money, the foundations of worth, the foundations of what you want, the foundations of what you have, manifestation, etc., and how to start from a place of fulfillment rather than a place of lack or defeat, rather than worrying about failure, rather than letting that deter you from your path. Okay, so that is what I'm seeing in your cards and in your astrology for the month of April Aries. Happy birthday again. I hope this month excites you and gives you all of the fiery passion that you need. Definitely let me know down below if you can see a lot of these things happening this month and if any of this related or was what you needed to hear. As always, if you would like to keep in touch with me, follow me on Instagram. I love you guys. Have a good month. Bye. Hello Taurus and welcome to your April 2022 horoscope. This will resonate most if you're a Taurus rising, but you may find some messages in here if you are a Taurus sun or moon as well. And happy birthday if you are a Taurus sun, if your birthday is coming up at the end of April. So anyways, um, I thought I was recording. I was just saying some really good shit and I'm so aggravated that it was not recording. So now I have to do this over. Uh, so what I was saying though, Taurus, is that April starts off with some really big long-term commitments or changes. It's like you are really focused on your future and there are some really big long-term adjustments, I think, being done here, especially in regards to your career, your future, what you want out of life, your achievements. You may be feeling called to do something bigger, to do something higher, or to connect with more people. You may be feeling called to really step into a new role in terms of what you want to do in your life, what you want out of life, your career, how you can help the world, how you can give back, how you can do something that, that creates something in the world, that, that creates a, a ripple effect to some extent, right? And so the beginning of April really looks like you stepping up to make that transition or to make that change or to make that commitment or something along those lines. But right before that, you may be feeling scared. You may be feeling like you are unsure or like you need to go within or like you need to figure out some insecurities first, right? Because with all of this Aries energy in your 12th, with Chiron there, this new moon on Chiron, it's really showing you where you have certain subconscious fears and insecurities, wounds that are holding you back. And so this may cause for a, 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 a vibe of going within, of secluding yourself a little bit, of taking a step back for a second and really looking at things from a whole new perspective. It may cause some patience 
right? You may need to practice some patience. You may need to surrender something. You may need to sacrifice something. Where in your life are you not being true to you? Where in your life are you not listening to the calling? Where in your life are you not listening to the path? Where in your life are you not being guided by your spirit, your intuition? You know, where in your life are you not listening to yourself and honoring your worth? That's what you need to take accountability for at the beginning of April. Something's going to show up and you're going to have to face it. You can't keep putting it off. You can't keep avoiding it. You can't keep acting like you don't see it. You can't keep like pretending that it, it's something that it's not, right? You have to address it. You have to face it. You have to be accountable for it. You have to take responsibility for it. And this puts you in a whole new perspective. This is the hangman, by the way. This puts you in a whole new perspective, gives you a whole new perspective, and it gets you crystal clear about what you want and where you're going. Because, and it puts you in a state of trust. It puts you in a state of, I have nothing else left to lose. And that is the perfect state to be. I know it doesn't sound like the perfect state to be, but it is. If you go back through your life and you think those moments where you literally just had to trust, right? Like you, you, you just had to trust. And, but at the same time, like you could trust because you had nothing else left to lose. It's actually very freeing and liberating. And that's the energy I'm getting here. And because it's freeing, because it's liberating, because it allows you to trust, because it's like, you know, I've already surrendered. I've already let it go. I've already faced it. I have nothing else left to lose. And so you step into this energy of the, Prince of uh, Pentacles. And then once you step into that energy, it's like, I can do this. I can commit to this, right? I can be reliable for this. So whatever this is that you're going towards, whatever this is that you want to change, that you want to shift, that you, whatever radical thing this is that you want to do in the world, it's like you finally can commit to it because you have nothing else left to lose because you had that perspective shift. And then that puts you in a place to get crystal clear, butt ass naked, right? Nothing left to lose. And you get crystal clear on other situations in your life that are not honoring your worth and where you haven't been honoring your worth. So you get clear on where you haven't been honoring your worth, but you also get clear on where other people and other situations and other things and, and all of that have not been honoring your worth where you haven't really been aligned with who you are. You haven't really been straight up. You haven't really been consistent. You haven't really been uh, secure within yourself. And that allows you to start cutting, chopping block. You gotta go, this has to go, this has to go, this behavior has to go, I have to stop doing this, I have to get real about this, I have to be accountable for this. And you start cutting out the chaos in your life, right? South node is in your seventh house. For a lot of you, this could look like a partnership, a relationship, a commitment, certain people in your life. And you get clear on the decisions that you need to make around some of these people. For others of you, it could be decisions that you need to make around things that are sketchy or chaotic, are not in the right energy, like deceptive, with the seven of swords here, four of pentacles reverse, unstable. And so you get clear about what in your life is unstable, what in your life is, is shaky and is not a match to you, that you've been putting up with, that you've been trying to stay secure for, but it's not doing the same for you. And by staying secure for it, you're actually not honoring your worth. You're actually not honoring the abundance within you, right? Now, there's no reason to regret any of it because it's taught you tons of lessons and it's been the catalyst for you to get to where you want to go. But that's just what I see here. It's like you're getting crystal clear on what needs to be cut out of your life and what you need to let go of. What are What's still contributing to these old wounds, this old version of you? And this is a big deal because right at the end of the month, we have this solar eclipse in your sign. So this is a life-changing month for you and a lot of a, a lot of people with this solar eclipse. This is like a brand new you is being born. And so this month is really ridding out whatever you don't want to take with you into this new year, into this new you. 
into this new life. Hopefully this resonates. Definitely let me know down below. I'd love, love, love to hear your feedback. And if any of those messages were messages that you needed to hear. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Gemini? Welcome to your April 2022 tarot and astrology reading, as well as your intuitive reading uh, for the month ahead. April is a really big mother effing month, okay? Uh, Gemini, I really see that you are stepping into the momentum. You are seeing the bigger vision. You are ready to go after your dreams. You are ready to lead. You are ready to truly step into your potential, to truly step into what really feels like on a soul level aligned with who you are as a person and where you want to go. You're ready to connect with the right people. You're ready to network. You're ready to sit down at a table with other leaders just like yourself. And April is a month that is really giving that to you if you really want it. But it's also showing you where you have certain wounds or where you have certain insecurities or feelings of lack in terms of the people in your life in terms of groups or in terms of friends or in terms of acquaintances or in terms of you know any kind of social interactions or dynamics so that could be coming up as well for you especially in like the first part of april but i really see april being for you gemini is like you are looking ahead majorly you are ready to make some really big commitments to further your awareness to further your mind to further your education to further what you want to do in life what gives you meaning and purpose in life. And you are likely feeling really drawn to something that really feels like an energetic match to you or that feels like so intuitive, uh, so intuitively guided, like just so energetically guided that you, you're you ready to move forward. You're looking at the bigger picture and you're like, where am I going? What's going on? I'm ready to do this. And so it's like, I see that you have this really big vision that you are ready to go after, that you are ready to start creating movement towards. And I think April is like where you're really seeing things on a whole new level. It's like your reality is changing. It's like it's like you are coming out of some kind of deep place where you see the potential for your worth in the world, if that makes sense. You see that you have value and that you can add to the world on such a larger scale than you originally thought possible. By being yourself, by being unique to yourself, you shine. By sharing your, by, by, by leading with your desires, by leading, by leading with who you really are, you actually end up helping other people to learn, to grow, to find meaning, to find purpose. And so it's like this month, you can really see the vision and that becomes so clear for you. And you become so aware of what it is that you want, what it is that you desire and where it is that you're going. We have so many transits happening in your ninth, 10th and 11th house, which is at the very top of your chart, which is all really about where you're going in life, what you're headed towards. And I really see that you're likely, like you've likely been working very hard on something, or you've likely been tapping very much into maybe like spirituality, manifestation, um, you know, subconscious abundance, and maybe working on subconscious beliefs around abundance and money and you know, lack or scarcity and fear and stuff like that. And so I think that your only issue here really is, is are you really ready for the commitment? Are you really ready for the stability? Or do you want to keep playing in the flakiness, right? We have the Prince of Cups reverse. And so this is a time where you could feel a little bit emotionally confused to some extent about committing to something about building something, about the stability within your life. There could be some emotional confusion there. Like emotionally, you may not be on the same page. Or this could be someone that you're dealing with in your life where maybe emotionally they're confused or emotionally they're not on the same page. And so it gets to a point where it's like, okay, 
what do we want? Where are we going? What are we building? It's like, if you're ready to build in the physical, if you're ready to bring these dreams to reality, if you're ready to truly start building what you want to build in this life, then something has to change emotionally, energetically, right? Either with you or this person. And so this month may be a month where you are deeply in introspection about how to commit, how to become more consistent, how to become more stable. And then we also have the Knight of Pentacles as well for your last card here. Once again, more stability, being more reliable, being able to commit and not being emotionally kind of flaky or all over the place with what it is that you want or what it is that you desire. And so this month is a really big month. You know, towards the end of the month, you likely will feel a little bit more introspective. You'll likely want to get away. You'll likely want to seclude yourself a little bit to really work on some behind the scenes stuff uh, because the sun will be moving into your 12th house and we will have the first solar eclipse of this year uh, in your 12th house. And so this will be a brand new time for healing, for your subconscious beliefs, for letting things go, for surrendering, for dealing with the behind the scenes stuff that needs to be deal with, the, the habits that maybe have been preventing you from moving forward in your life. And so that solar eclipse could be a pretty major time of a new cycle for you starting and clearing out an old one at the end of the month. So you definitely wanna watch out for that. So uh, yeah, we have a lot of energy happening in your 10th house this month, especially mid to end month with Mars and Venus coming into your 10th house. So you're really making a lot of adjustments in terms of your career, your future, your goals, where you're going in life, where you're headed, your dreams, what you want to make come true in your life, where you go, like finding meaning and purpose in your life path, finding emotional fulfillment in what you're doing in your career, in your life, etc. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Gemini. Definitely let me know down below if this resonates with you. I would really, really love to hear your feedback and if any of these messages uh, were messages that you needed to hear. If you would like to follow me even further or work with me, see my description down below. I post on Instagram every day. I have a Patreon where I do exclusive content and I do one-on-one -on -one services. So if that interests you, then see the stuff in the description. I love you guys. Have a good month. Bye. What's up, Cancer? Welcome to your April 2022 Tarot Astrology and Intuitive Reading by Moa. Let's go ahead and get into it, Cancer. This month is a boss-ass month for you guys. I see just like a kind of like I mean business-ass month here for you guys. Like you guys are stepping into boss mode. And I really feel like there are some successes for you this month, but there are also some transitions for you this month where you may be pulled to lead in more of a empress kind of way rather than an emperor kind of way. And it may pull you out of your comfort zone a little bit. And so it's kind of like you start off the month and this emperor like energy where you are just killing it. You know, you are, I don't know if some of you guys own a business or if you're stepping into some kind of leader role at work or if you're an entrepreneur or, you know, whatever it is, if you're a manager or if you are really just going after what you want in terms of work, your career, etc. But it's like you are going for it this month and I really see it paying off in a lot of ways with the six of wands here. It's like you are feeling the success, you are feeling the almost validation for what you're doing. It's like really reaffirming, you know, and you're stepping into that power and you're really you like you have a strategy, you have it down, you know what you're doing and you're putting something out there. It may be something new and then you wind up in this transition energy like that. That works out, but then something happens where it's like, okay, either now I want to go here or I want to find out how to do this the softer way, how to do this in a different way, or just something happens to where you end up transitioning into your feminine with the Empress here. And this may bring up some wounds, you know, you may see where maybe your feminine energy, your feminine side has been carrying some burdens. Uh, it, maybe it has been carrying a lot of wounds from the past, 
<clears throat> right? And so you start really possibly learning about this. You start really focusing more on how you're feeling and where those feelings are coming from. You start maybe focusing more on your intuition, right? And you really start realizing that it's, it's time that you let go, that maybe you've been unclear about this part of you, this more feminine, emotional part of you, this part of you that's deeper, this part of you that, that needs healing. And you start realizing this and it's like, okay, it's time to surrender, right? With the hanged man here. It's time to let go. It's like there's some kind of burden that comes up mid-month where you realize that it's time to let go. It is time to let go. It's time for a new perspective. It's time to surrender. It's time to face something. It's time to face something emotional. And then we have the Perseverance card, the Seven of Disc, and so, which tells me that you get through it. You know what I mean? By actually releasing this burden on yourself, this burden you've been putting on your feminine energy, this burden you've been putting on, oh, I have to do things this way, or I have to follow these rules, or I have to do things in these lines. It's like you allow yourself to be untamed. You allow yourself to be free. You allow yourself to face these old burdens, these old wounds, these old emo emotions that you've been carrying so long, right? And then that gives you this internal wisdom and you're able to persevere. You're able to move through it. And so this is a very interesting month, Cancer. It's got kind of a polarity to it, two different sides to it, where you're really stepping into your power, but you're learning the dynamics of your power, not just one side or the other. Or, you know, I have to do things this way to be in my power, or I have to act this way to be in my power. And that's not the case at all, right? You have to go inside and figure that out. And so this month, you could find that you're having a lot of awareness and a lot of epiphanies around your career, your life, your goals, what you're, you know, what you're moving forward to, what what you're moving into, what you want for your life ahead, what you want for your reputation, what you want for your career, what you want in terms of the long term. And then we also have in the very beginning of the month, you could be making some changes or adjustments in terms of uh, finances or in terms of uh, contracts or in terms of uh, like making pretty big financial commitments or uh, really changing around some financial affairs that have been weighing you down, right? You could also be taking accountability financially for some things as well towards the beginning of the month. And so that's something else that you could see coming up as well too. But there are definitely some big changes that could affect your long term or that are a little bit more serious regarding uh, the financial realm or your partner's finances in the very beginning of the month. And then as we get through the month, I see you really learning and expanding, spending a lot of time on education or figuring out what gives you meaning emotionally, what gives you fulfillment emotionally. And I think you start realizing like, hey, this old way that I was doing things is not fulfilling me emotionally. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to find emotional purpose. I want to find purpose that is fulfilling that allows me to transcend these these old ways of doing things that aren't working for me anymore or don't feel quite right and so it's like that's when you go through this transition where you start tapping into your feminine power you start tapping into your nurturing power your emotional power right and from there you start finding the beauty uh, you start finding the beauty in the mother. You start finding the beauty in uh, the maid. You start finding the beauty in the crone. You start finding the beauty in the things that you love, right? Of all the phases, all of the different faces of feminine energy. And so at the very end of the month, we have a solar eclipse happening in Taurus, which is your 11th house sector. And so this could be a massive change or a massive turning point, a massive awakening, a massive new beginning coming in for you in terms of your social life, your friends, your dreams, your ambitions, what you want to do in the world, your place in the world. And it can be something that brings you more abundance or that brings you more wealth 
whether that's physical wealth or internal wealth, or whether that's liberating you in some way. But that's kind of towards the very end of the month on the 30th, that you will notice those energies. So anyways, Cancer, that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of April. Let me know down below if any of these messages resonated for you, if they were your messages, if it felt right, if it aligned, uh, if you could see these things happening in the month of April, or even come back and listen to this throughout the month and let me know. If you would like to work farther with me, I post daily uh, almost on Instagram. I also have one-on-one -on -one services, so you can check that out down below too. I also have exclusive content over on my Patreon. All of that is linked down below, so make sure to check that out. I love you guys, and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Leo, Leo, Leo. Welcome. Welcome to your April 2022 tarot, astrology, and intuitive reading for the month ahead. Let's get into it. So Leo, the big lesson for us, I say us because I'm a Leo rising and this will resonate most if you're a Leo rising too, but the biggest lesson for us this month is perspective. How are we looking at things? Are we looking at things like with a cup half full mentality or with a cup half empty mentality? There's a lot of polarity in your reading. This month can be whatever you want it to be, right? It is all about your perception. It is all about how you're perceiving things. It is all about how you're looking at things, which angle you're looking at them from. And so this month is going to be a time where you may need to go within. You may need to take some space, meditate, but there's also going to be a lot of learning and adventure this month. There's going to be a lot of meaning and purpose. You're gonna be finding meaning and purpose through this month. You're gonna be learning and growing and studying new things. You're gonna be expanding your education, expanding your perspective in some way, shape or form, or you're gonna be teaching. You know, Some of you guys could be mentoring, teaching, et cetera, but it's gonna be really from a place of finding a new perspective, finding a new way to look at things and taking time out when you feel like you need it, right? We have the Four of Cups, the Hierophant, and the Hanged Man. And so where do you need to take accountability for how you're perceiving things? Where do you need to take accountability for your belief systems, right? Where are there old belief systems that are no longer serving you that you need to replace? Where do you need to go inward, meditate, take some time to, to really reflect on your perspectives? And that's going to be really big this month because for some of you, you may also have some legal stuff coming up or some, some court stuff or something like that that's coming up since we are dealing with the ninth house here and we do have the justice card here. And I want to tell you that if that's you and you are dealing with some legalities, some contracts, etc., it would be wise not to blow off the handle not to react in a very aggressive way or not to instigate a situation, uh, to get yourself maybe a representative, a lawyer, etc., and to be patient, to be fair, to be unbiased, and to check your perspective with the temperance card here. To be fair, to be equal, to come to an agreement, and to receive rather than try to control with the Empress here. Okay, so I wanted to tell you that straight up in case some of you guys do have some like law and order type stuff going on here. But other than that, if that's not you, then once again, this is about polarity. Where do you need to check your perspective? Where do you need to get down to the truth of the situation? Where do you need to take accountability for your part, your actions in a situation? And I think that this month is like finding that fine balance between taking action and following through on your desires versus doing the internal work, right? Doing things in moderation and being okay with your insides rather than just your outsides. I think that may come up for a lot of Leo risings this month. Now, we also have a really big event happening this month which is the solar eclipse, our first solar eclipse of the year, happening in Taurus on April 30th. And this is our 10th house of career, reputation, our life goals, where we're going in life, what we want out of life, our long-term vision for our future, our reputation, and so our, our legacy. And so this solar eclipse here is massive. This is about majorly upgrading in terms of how we do business in the world. If you own your own business, whatever you do for your career, 
whatever you want to be in the world, whatever you want to do or achieve in the world, your goals, your lifetime goals, your long-term goals, your reputation, how the world sees you, your brand, all of that is being upgraded by the end of April. And so everything that you're learning, all of these lessons that you're learning in the beginning of April lead to that last that last time frame in April. So keep that in mind. All of these lessons are like basically a catalyst to take you into the person that you need to be to make what you want to happen in terms of your career, in terms of where you're going, in terms of upgrading for your future, to be that person that you need to be to step into that power. And so these are all those lessons. Can you get to a place of neutrality? Can you check your perspective? Can you check yourself when you're not holding yourself to a higher standard, when you're not following your own morals, when you're not following your own values? So another big thing that we have happening right in the beginning of the month is the Mars-Saturn conjunction in Aquarius in our seventh house. So this looks like some serious changes or actions being taken in terms of our relationships or our commitments. And I really kind of see that here, Leo, there, there seems to be a lot of questioning or a lot of priority shifts in terms of some people in your life. For some of you, this could be a romantic partner. For others of you, this could be a friend or, you know, just somebody that is a significant person in your life. It's like there's some kind of change happening and there could be a perspective shift on the situation or on the person. You could start seeing them in a new light or start seeing them in a different way and your priorities or their priorities could shift. Something is kind of adjusting or shifting here and you start seeing where maybe you weren't so clear about this person or about this relationship or about this connection or uh, about something, a situation in your life. There's something here where either you were deceiving yourself or maybe you were be de being deceived or maybe you were trying to take a shortcut or take the easier, softer way or resisting something. And then you start kind of seeing the truth and it's like, oh yeah, that makes sense now. And you can't really ignore the feeling anymore. You can't ignore your intuition anymore. It's like all out in the open. And so it really is addressing certain fears for others of you as well. Like it, it could be addressing certain fears and choices and decisions and connections, relationships as well this month that I see coming up here for you. So Leo, a lot of big stuff, but the future is bright. With all this ninth house energy, it's like we feel like we can expand. We, we wanna discover more. We wanna discover what's out there. We wanna go on an adventure. We wanna go on a journey. We, we want to follow a path that is fueled with passion and desire, where we feel like a leader, where we feel like us, where we can learn where we can grow, where we can teach, where we can help others, right? And that's really coming in this month. We also have a ton going on in Pisces this month, which is your eighth house. So a lot of you guys could be investing in your education or it could be investing in your future or it could be investing in yourself or it could be investing in your business or your career or your job. Or you could be having a lot of financial opportunities come in or a lot of opportunities in terms of business and wealth and investing. Your financial affairs are gonna be a major focus this month as well. How are you balancing that out? How are you finding harmony there? And so there's so much going on this month. This month, this month really has an amazing energy to it. And I think that a lot of Leo Risings could also be getting deep into esoteric knowledge or deep into uh, energetics in, in terms of wealth or money or finances in some way. That could be another way that this, this energy is used. So anyways, Leo, hopefully this resonates. Let me know down below. Uh, I think that is basically everything. We have the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction this month and Venus will be nearby as well. So it's just like, you know, there may be some serious things happening or some difficult things happening in one area, but in another area, it's like really good. And it's just like the vibes are there and we're expanding and we're growing and we're being fulfilled and we're expanding in a very spiritual way. And so, yeah, it's just, it really depends on how you're looking at things this month. It really depends on your perspective. It really depends on if you're really ready to hold yourself accountable and commit to your morals 
commit to your values and to go off that instead of going off just the rules or going off a strategy or going off how other people say to do it and being accountable and truthful with yourself. Okay, so let me know down below if any of these messages were messages that were for you that you needed to hear. If you would like to work with me farther or one-on-one, -on -one, check the description below. Also, if you would like to get more from me every day, I post on Instagram a lot. And I also post tons of exclusive content, content over on Patreon. So definitely check that out as well. I love you guys. Have a good month. Bye. Hello, Virgo. Welcome to your April 2022 Tarot and Astrology reading for the month ahead for April 2022 um, and intuitive reading as well. So let's go ahead and get into it, Virgo. April is a month, Virgo, where there is a lot going on in terms of your relationships, but also in terms of money, finances, investments, financial affairs, debt, resources, any kind of financial shit that you got going on is a pretty big focus for the month of April. And there may be some things that come up that need to be addressed, you know, that you have to really approach and assert yourself with. And so, but you have to do it in a way that is mature and that is, you know, not just good for you, but good for the long haul, good for everybody involved or good for, you know, everyone. Now, to a certain extent, what is good for you is good for everyone, right? So uh, do keep that in mind too. But I'm just saying you don't want to approach things in a very triggered reactionary way this month because that's just not what you want to do, okay? Uh, because Chiron is involved and so we can tend to approach things from a wounded state or a less than state and a triggered state and we can end up regretting that if we're not careful. So we do just need to be aware of that. Also, Virgo, I feel that some of you could be almost escaping to a certain extent. You've had Saturn and Mars and Venus in your sixth house for a while. And so there's been a lot of focus going towards your day-to-day -day work or your day-to-day -day life, uh, but it may feel stagnant or it may feel difficult or it may feel stuck or it may feel super, super hard to get going, you know, like get off the ground in some way. It may feel very hard uh, for some of you. It may be a struggle for some of you. And so because of all that energy going there, because that can feel so heavy and so dense or like such a struggle, there can also be an energy where you are escaping or where you are putting things off or where you like the burdens or the the background noise is starting to back up, back up a lot. You know, it's like you've been you've been putting this off and putting that off and putting that off and putting this off and you know you've been so stressed and the way that you're dealing with the stress may actually be an issue right and because that issue isn't being addressed and you're doing that issue whether whatever it is that you're doing to not feel the stress all these other things that you've been avoiding because you're stressed and you're doing this thing to deal with the stress are stacking up if that makes sense and so this month you can kind of be, because we start off with the Hermit and the Queen of Wands. And so I feel like part of you is like, yes, okay, I need to do this. I need to start taking action. I'm motivated. I'm ready. Like, let's do this. But then the other part of you with the Hermit here is like, uh, I just kind of want to close myself off. I just kind of want to distance myself. I just kind of want to be secluded. I kind of just, I don't want to, you know? And so it's like, you may have these conflicting parts of you in April that are kind of opposing each other where one side of you wants to go go for it and the other side of you is like eh, I'd rather just sit here I'm not ready you like I'm still like I'm still looking for something or I'm still I still need answers on something it's like you're not quite ready yet right but this energy can really put you in a place of not really seeing things as they are, not seeing reality as it is, or escaping certain things, avoiding certain things. And that's why I'm saying what I'm saying, because we have the Six of Cups and the Moon here. And so there can be some trust issues in yourself. It's like maybe you don't quite trust yourself to go all the way or to do something or take action on something that you've been wanting to take action on. And so, and that's been stacking up with this 10 of wands here. It's like becoming a burden. It's becoming heavy, right? And you've been kind of maybe in this illusory world 
not really seeing things as they are and just kind of hoping for the best, right? And I think that that's a response to maybe some of the stress that you've been under, whether with work or some kind of health thing or whatever the case may be. It's like you've been really like under that Saturn energy of like, you know, where things can be difficult or whatever. And so it's been like draining you a lot or, or taking a lot of energy and focus from you. And so I think this month with the two of Pentacles here, it's really getting like getting back to what your priorities are, right? What do you need to do? What other things that what other things do you need to focus on? And finding a balance, you know, it's not that you can't focus on both. You can multitask. You know what I mean? It's just like, maybe you've been putting it off because it's difficult. Maybe you've been putting it off because you don't want to deal with it, right? You've been putting it off with this four of cups here because you're disappointed or you're dissatisfied. And so you've been just trying to find a little bit of an ounce of like relief or escape, etc. But this month is all about perspective. This hangman keeps coming up for a lot of the signs, but this month is really about perspective. It's about surrendering to it. It's about facing it, getting accountable, facing what needs to be done and facing your actions, facing what you've done, right? And so this is really going inside of yourself and getting yourself emotionally ready to hold what you need to hold to get back into a place of balance, to get back into a place of alignment where you're not continually just putting things to the side or holding things until they get too heavy. And instead of dealing with them, looking the other way, right? And I think, you know, all this Pisces energy being in your seventh and opposing your ascendant or any planets that you have in your first house can really be doing that. It's like a distraction. It's like you've been distracting yourself or you've been like not wanting to face things or not wanting to deal with things or not wanting to look at things that you know you need to, right? And so this month is like, hey, where do you need to do that? Whether in your relationships, whether in your day-to-day -day activities, your day-to-day -day life, you know? There could be a lot going on with your partner. Your partner could be expanding and, and going through all of the, this stuff or your relationship life could be expanding and going through all of this stuff. There may be some changes though with that in the month of April as Mars moves into your seventh house on the 14th and will be in there for the next like little over a month. So after the 14th when Mars moves in, there's definitely possibly going to be some changes within your relationships or significant people within your life in some way. And so it'll be a time of really bringing in some heatedness into the into the relationship department, which doesn't always mean it's not always like a, a negative thing. You know what I mean? Like it can bring passion. It can like bring that spark back as well, but it can also bring some change um, and also bring some shifts in the energy of your relationship life. So keep that in mind. But yeah, so I think April Virgo for you is really getting clear on what you want, what you desire, what you're willing to go after to stop living in this kind of illusory state, you know, to see things as they really are, <clears throat> to kind of wake up out of your sleep in a way, so to say, you know? So anyways, Virgo, let me know down below if that resonated with you. Towards the very end of the month on the 30th, we have a solar eclipse happening in your ninth house. So this is going to be a massive upgrade coming in terms of your belief systems, what you want to do in the world, where you're going in the world, what you want to learn, educational pursuits, travel, all of that. So you're really going to be seeing a lot of those themes coming up in your life towards the end of the month whole fresh new perspective is coming in for you. You know, you may want to get into some kind of spiritual practice, you know, something that really grounds you or that really balances, balances you out or evens you out on a day-to-day -day basis, meditation even, you know, where you can like let some of this overwhelm go and face some of the things in a, in a easier way, in a more clear way, because you're clear within yourself. 
So anyways, Virgo, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Let me know down below if any of this resonated with you and if any of these messages were your messages. I'd really love to hear your feedback. You can come back throughout the month and watch as well if you need to. If you would like to work with me further or follow me uh, on other social media platforms and keep up with me, see the description down below. I have a website where you can uh, book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I also have an Instagram where I post almost daily so you can keep up with me. And I also have a Patreon where you can get exclusive content. So I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up Libra? Welcome to your April 2022 tarot, astrology, and intuitive reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. Let's go ahead and get into it. This will resonate most if you are a Libra rising. So do keep that in mind, but you can watch and may find some messages in here if you are a Libra sun or moon. Be sure to watch your other signs though too. So April is a month, Libra, that is very, very focused on your relationships, how you show up in the world, how you interact with other people, your relationship dynamics, your commitments, the significant people within your life, where you find love, where you find passion, where you find pleasure, where you find desire. All of those things are so, 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 so big in April. And that is because we have a connection happening between your seventh house of relationships and significant relationships in your life, commitments, relationship dynamics, how you show up in the world, but also we have a connection with your fifth house as well of love, passion, sex, desire, children, fertility, all the things, pleasure. So this month, you could be noticing those themes come up majorly. And there could be a lot coming up in terms of maybe certain desires that you have that you keep to yourself because you know, you're trying to be humble or maybe certain pleasures that you have that you keep to yourself because you're trying to be humble. And so there could be a change happening here or even like a major commitment to yourself regarding your de desires, passions, pleasures, you know, the things that you find joy in sexuality, but also possibly dating romance or children, you know, all of these big picture things could be coming up here where you're maybe making a serious commitment where you're you're learning a lesson that's that's requiring you to make some changes in your life with with these different topics. And so those are some really big things that you could notice coming up in the month of April. Now, on top of all of that, you are having a lot of awakenings and energetic bliss happening in the day-to-day -day workspace and your day-to-day life with, you know, the things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, health, routine, exercise, etc. And so there is just a lot of creativity on and popping in your day-to-day -day life and with your routines and how you're incorporating creativity and, and emotional fulfillment and energy into your day-to-day -day life and how that is expanding you and how that is maybe expanding your work and expanding, you know, the, the task and the things that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis. And so, so yeah, a lot of this month, Libra, is really centered around your fifth, sixth, seventh, and somewhat of your eighth house. And so there is some money and financial stuff that is coming up, especially towards the end of the month, where you are really focusing more on wealth. You are really focusing more on abundance and your financial affairs. And there could be some really major life changes that happen there towards the end of the month around April 30th, as we have the solar eclipse in Taurus happening in your eighth house, which is our first solar eclipse of the year. And it's a big deal. And so eclipses can bring life changes and life altering decisions and paths and opportunities and, and shifts. And so this could be happening in terms of your investments, your finances, your money, your financial affairs, how you're building your wealth, and all of those types of things towards the end of the month. So definitely keep an eye out for that. So let's get to your cards. We have the judgment cards starting off. And so it looks like this month, Libra in April, you're really walking into it, facing a lot of past baggage and facing a lot of old things that have been buried within you. It's like there's an awakening happening or like a, a judgment day that's here. It's like you're taking accountability and you're taking action on this old stuff. You're forgiving a lot. You know, it's like I can't keep holding on to these like old skeletons of these closets anymore. I can't keep bringing this with me. And so it's like you are waking up and you're like, I'm not doing this anymore. You know, it's like you're, you're, you're forgiving and you're taking responsibility. You're taking accountability for your side of the street and you're moving forward. Right. And it's like, it's just a really beautiful moment where it's like, you finally start to realize like what really matters and what doesn't. And um, where you can finally move forward in a way of grace and surrender and acceptance and truth 
and where you can let go of a lot of the past baggage, a lot of the past bullshit, a lot of the, the old things that kept weighing on you or kept making you feel guilty or remorse um, or remorseful, etc. So, so yeah, that's something that I see for a lot of Librans right in the beginning of the month. And then we have the Princess of Wands and the High Priestess. And so I feel like you're really exploring your divinity. You are exploring the internal and emotional intuitive wisdom within you uh, this month, Libra. It's like you are just on a path to really listening to yourself, really listening to your higher self, really listening to your your internal wisdom you know it's like you have it within you and you're you're being guided by it it's like you are you are allowing it to be there and you know that you have the answers within you it's like you're stepping into your power you're stepping into that wisdom you're stepping into that divinity within you which allows you to really see how just how worthy you are right how unique you are but also how connected you are where you have the power to make a difference you have a, the power to make a difference in the world. And you're really starting to see that. And you're really starting to see the, the vision, you know, you're really starting to see the vision for yourself. And it's also helping that you're becoming more introspective. You're becoming more in tune with your emotions. You're becoming more in tune with your energy, right? This could be through yoga, dance, or some kind of meditative practice daily, or some kind of spiritual practice that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's like, you're really coming in with your energy and you are, really learning how to pour from a full cup, right? How to only uh, pour from a full cup, right? And not over assert yourself or pour from an empty cup, right? And this is leading you to money. This is leading you to wealth. This is leading you to abundance. This is leading you to, to feel wealthy, you know? I think a lot of you guys could also be really noticing some physical uh, manifestations coming in that maybe you've been working on for a while. You could be noticing, you know, just how powerful you really are in the month of April, basically. So we also have the Nine of Wands, uh, which deals with resilience. We have the Four of Cups and we have the Three of Pentacles. And so I think that what I'm really getting with this is like coming back into a balance with not only your emotional realm, but your physical realm, right? Like where do you need to take a step back versus where do you need to assert yourself? Where do you need to stand up for your desires and take action versus where do you need to be more introspective basically? And so I think that finding a balance with that in April could also come up for a lot of you. And so yeah, I really see that you are just moving through so much, you know, and hopefully this is resonating for you guys, uh, especially if you're a Libra rising. It's like, you're really in a place of peace. You're really in a place of like, or at least, you know, you're in a place of, of calmness internally a lot more than you were before, basically, right? And so you're, you're really getting into this place of your internal wisdom and what you have to offer. And, and getting con more connected internally to yourself instead of depending so much on other people or outside validation or outside circumstances, et cetera, et cetera. It's like you're, you're really nurturing yourself back to life in a really beautiful way. And so, yeah, and somehow this is going to play out with your relationships this month. And you're really looking at the future in terms of the people in your life and, and who you want to have in your life and, and how to really expand with the people in your life, etc. So let me know down below, Libra, if this resonates. We do have a full moon in your sign as well, uh, mid-month on the 16th, and this will be in your sign. So it'll be a pretty big deal. This will be a shedding or a, a moment of really getting back to yourself and remembering who you are or a new version of yourself being born almost. Um, so that's going to be really awesome and interesting. And your ruling planet is going to be in Pisces after the 5th of April for basically the rest of the month. And it's going to make some really badass transits to Jupiter and Neptune in Pisces. And so this definitely can look like a really pleasurable awakening of sorts to your day-to-day -day life and you know, different things that you're doing in your day-to-day -day life and how you're expanding and growing in your day-to-day -day life and bringing more pleasure and more love, more beauty, more harmony, more um, 
fulfillment into your day-to-day -day life. So anyways, thank you guys so, so much for watching Libra. If you would like to work with me further or get a personal session with me, check the description below. I have a website where I offer personal one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, and soul work and astrology readings and all of that. And then I also have an Instagram where I post almost daily so you can keep up with me. And then I also have a Patreon where, where, blah, 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 where I post exclusive content a lot. So if you would like to check that out, all of that's down below. I love you and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What's up, Scorpio? Welcome to your April 2022 tarot and astrology reading for the month ahead. Also intuitive reading as well. Hope you guys are doing good and let's go ahead and get into it. So Scorpio, I feel very, very called to tell you that you cannot always carry other people with you when you go through a major shift or a major awakening, etc. Like there are times in life where sometimes people are not going to walk that path with you and they're not going to get it. And I don't know why I felt super caught to tell you that. So that may be a message for one person. It may be a message for many of you. I have no effing idea. So let me know if that was your message. But other than that, in April Scorpio, I really see you starting off April with a possibly a pretty large lesson or a large commitment. It's like some kind of serious change that needs to happen or a serious lesson that needs to be learned or a serious shift or a serious commitment for like the long term or something that's been taking forever it's like you're there's finally this this collapse of like are like what what's going on here you know there's finally this this energy that gets that's been so slow moving or so stagnant forever that finally is getting pushed forward it's like yes this is hard but it needs to be done right and that's how i really see april starting off for you so and this could be in your internal life in your personal life in your in your private life, in your family life, in your home life in some way for a lot of you. But I really see here, it's like that you're really addressing head on something that has been a struggle for you. And for a lot of you, it could involve your past, your childhood, family, or people that are like family, your living situation, or people that you live with, just or something just going on that's very personal to you that you're having to finally address and move through, that you're having to finally address and move past. And I see that here with the chariot and the ten of wands. It's like this burden that you've been carrying forever. But it's like, do you want to keep going with this burden? Or do you want to face it and address it? You know, because if you face it and address it, if you welcome both the light, the dark, the good, the bad, the ugly, the, the unstable, the stable, the chaotic, the, the perfectly, you know, pristine, like if you welcome all of it, all of the polarity in and you're like, let's just give me all of it. I know it all happened. And if you can come to this place of acceptance with it, emotional acceptance and mental acceptance, right? Like allow that to sink all the way into your body. That is when you start moving forward. That is when the forward momentum kicks in. That is when you get really clear about your direction and you stop trying to choose this way or that way, this or that. It's like, no, take all of it, right? Like face whatever it is that you're putting off that is what's keeping you stuck and i felt really called to tell you that as well so i also see here scorpio that we start off with the death card which is how i definitely know this is your reading but we also have the universe and so it's like something is ending and coming full circle here right and it's like coming full circle in a place of like you cannot cater to everybody and you cannot like you cannot keep living in a way that's flaky or unstable right? You cannot keep choosing the chaos over the stability, right? And so there's like a full circle ending coming here. Like this is a big deal. It's the world card. This is like an awakening where you realize it's all fucking connected and it's, it's like a big deal. It's like mind bent, right? And um, it's a big phase too. So you're in like this big phase of your life where everything's coming full circle. There's cycles ending, there's cycles starting, everything's making sense. All the patterns are like coming together. Everything's connected and you're like, holy shit, right? And you're going through this massive change, this massive transformation, this massive shift, like something is dying to be reborn, right? You're, you're, it could also be for a lot of you, your view on something or your worldview or what you want for your life, like what you want for like the bigger picture or something, you know? And it's like, you realize that the key is stability. You realize that the key is consistency. 
you realize that the key is actually like what you want is actually abundance and stability. And that means that you have to shift out of the victim mindset. Even if something was done to you in the past, or if something was done to you recently, even if other people's behaviors were ratchet and uncalled for, right? That you cannot control, but you can control what you do about it. And by continuing to act like it didn't hurt or be in the toxic masculinity version of this, which females and, you know, anybody can embody the toxic masculine. And I became very aware of mine over these last few months. So trust me, I get it. But there's no controlling this. There's no strategy. There's no overstepping or overdoing that can just like, you know, make it go away, right? So if you've been stuck in trying to not allow yourself to be vulnerable, because here's the thing, scorpions, a lot of the time, Scorpios don't like to allow themselves to be vulnerable, but that's actually where they find their power again. And that's where the whole transformation happens. That's where everything starts occurring. And it's like, oh my God, like I'm the shit, like I'm super powerful, right? And so this is allowing, not allowing yourself to be vulnerable. It's basically hurting yourself to hurt someone else. It's kind of like that, right? Like, oh, well, I'm just gonna like go get sloppy drunk on a night that I have to work because you pissed me off. You know what I mean? Like it, it really is feeding yourself poison to get back at someone else. And that's kind of what I'm getting with this. It's like, where are you doing that in your life? Where are you isolating yourself or cutting yourself off or, you know, and, and it's because you're hurt in some way or you were this could be a situation in the past that's coming up you know that that is for whatever reason relevant in your life this month but it's like where are you not really in your full power right once you get in your full power internally emotionally and vulnerably then the healthy masculine can come and contain that for you rather than being an overdrive or trying to project it when it's really not there inside of you. And the way to get there inside of you is by feeling, right? And so where are you being the instigator or being the one that isn't really authentically, truly, energetically, spiritually aligned in your actions and reactions? Where are you trying to control something? Where are you becoming overbearing about something? All because you're hurt inside, but don't want to show that, but don't want to allow that to be seen. You want to hide it. The South Node is in your sign, right? It's going to bring up all these old behaviors, all of these old things that you do that are no longer working for you. That really actually end up taking you backwards and making you miserable and making you feel stuck, right? With all this burden on your back, where it all's stacking up and you're not really getting anywhere. And so if you wanna get clear about where you're going, what you want, what you desire, your feelings, right? And you want, you actually realize that you want that stability. You also have to get clear on where you are doing this kind of shit to yourself or to others or where you attract people that do this kind of shit, right? That are still stuck in, oh, I'm hurt, so I'm gonna punish other people, right? So, you know, that was kind of a little bit intense, you know, but I know you're a Scorpio and you can handle it, or at least a Scorpio rising and you can handle it, so hopefully you can. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> we are all adults here, so, and it may not resonate for all of you. It is a general reading, so keep that in mind. But anyway, so that's what I'm seeing for you this month, Scorpio. You know, uh, some other things other than that, you could see a lot coming up in terms of work, your day-to-day -day routines, your health, where do you want to get active again? Where do you need to start asserting yourself more in your day-to-day -day life and taking action and, you know, being more in a leadership role in that day-to-day -day life, being more in your authority in your day-to-day -day life and routines and work and you know, all of that. 
Uh, we also have a ton of stuff going on in your fifth house this month that's going to be really awesome. So you could definitely really be feeling that creative, pleasurable, desirable energy uh, where, you know, maybe you're connecting more with your inner child or you're, you know, connecting more with your sexuality or connecting more with your creative gifts, you know, things like that. And there's going to be a solar eclipse in your seventh house on April 30th, which is also a really big effing deal. This solar eclipse in your seventh house is a massive <laughs> event happening in terms of your relationships, the significant people within your life, your love life, you know, and um, also just any kind of commitments or significant relationships that you have, whether it's love or not, or whether it's intimate or not, you know? And so this is gonna be a massive shift there, massive awakenings, massive change. So watch out for that at the very end of the month. So hopefully that resonates with you guys, Scorpio. Definitely let me know down below if this was your reading. I would really, really love to appreciate, I, I would really, really appreciate it if you did. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you would like to work with me further, or if you would like to follow me on Instagram where I post a lot and just keep up with me, everything's linked down below. I do one-on-one -on -one readings and sessions. So yeah, I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. What is going on Sagittarius and welcome to your April 2022 tarot astrology and intuitive reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing good and having a wild time out there. So let's go ahead and get into it Sag. So April is a month for you where you have a lot going on in your day-to-day -day life and activities, your family, your home life, your pleasure, your passions, your children, and your day-to-day -day work schedules, routines, etc. So there's a lot going on in these areas in April, and these will really be the main focuses of April and throughout April for you. So we kind of start April off with uh, the, the Mars-Saturn conjunction, which could be a little bit dense or a little bit heavy. It could be uh, I mean, it is in your third house, so luckily that's great. Like, it's probably one of the best places to have this conjunction. So this could bring up, though, some communication, some serious, heavier, or more, you know, like, more long-term communications in some way where, like, you're discussing something long-term or you're discussing, like, the seriousness of something or you're you're discussing the, the density of a situation maybe with another person or something along those lines. It just, it could bring in something like a topic that's more serious and, and that's of something that needs to be changed or shifted, something that you need to take action on or something that you need to, you know, do in terms of your day-to-day -day life or like a, a, a conversation with someone, a talk with someone or your environment or something like that. So that's something that is really starting off April. And then also starting off April, there could be some child insecurities that come up or some insecurities or wound with your inner child, some insecurities or wounds with your sexuality or your passions or your talents or something like that. So that could also be the case. But as we move throughout April, that energy kind of fades and we really get into a lot of Piscean energy, some Aries energy, and then eventually some Taurus energy, which is your fourth, fifth, and sixth house. So what that means basically is, is that I see you really doing a lot of expanding and finding a lot of pleasure in your personal life, in the home, uh, in, in, you know, with family, with like those, the connections that just feel fulfilling to you in your life and, and doing things on a personal level that, that feel really fulfilling and rewarding to you and that really expand you in ways, you know? And so you could be doing something really creative behind the scenes or doing something really creative at home or something like that. I'd love to know what it is if you're already relating to this, by the way. So on top of that though, with it being Aries season and Aries being your fifth house, you know, this is, this is, it's kind of like a somewhat social time with some of the third house energy and then also it being Aries season. And that makes a lot of sense because you have the three of cups coming up here first. So you could definitely have like a lot of social situations coming up. There could be a lot of events that you're going to in April or a lot of different, you know, plans that you have or things that you're attending or something like that. And I also see here that, you know, there's a lot of, dedication to really just being alive in April, like just doing things that make you feel alive, right? Like getting really dedicated to things that just light you on fire, things that make you feel passion, that make you feel desire, that make you feel like, you know, that, that just really set your, like that just really set that spark for you, you know, that like, initiate you into something that 
that sparks you and that brings you joy, that brings you passion and that brings you pleasure and a sense of confidence and leadership as well in yourself. And so I really love that for this month for you, Sag, too. And then we also have the two of cups. So once again, more connecting, more connection, more bringing, you know, different people together or, you know, talking to different people or having conversations with different people, likely people that live near you, or for some, it could even be like clients or, you know, something like that as well, like online. But yeah, but the only thing I would say here is that for some of you, it could be online because we do have the seven of swords and the king of swords, which is very airy and mental. And so there could be something here where maybe you are connecting, like so there's a connection that maybe you have in your life that you are kind of seeing that maybe you could, for, for whatever reason, I kind of feel with this, it's like it, this connection causes contraction in your life and yourself and your body. It's like, there's a certain level of like feeling like you can't quite open up or be yourself all the way around this connection or around this situation. It could also be a situation. So there's that too for some of you. And that's kind of what I'm getting from this seven of swords and king of swords. It, it kind of feels like like not an equal footing, but at the same time you're you're connecting with them or you would like it to be at an like a from an equal place, but it may not feel that way uh, for some of you. So we also have the wheel of fortune and the Hierophant and the Star. And so I feel like this is also a month that is really all over the place in a lot of ways with the Wheel of Fortune. It's like you go from feeling abundant to feeling kind of like, eh, not that great to feeling successful and great again. Like I got this to feeling not that great again. Um, So there can be some ups and downs this month, you know, but I mean, you'll, you'll get through it. You got this. So we also have the Hierophant and the star. And so I think that you're really starting to see the world in a different way. You're starting to see your beliefs in a different way. You're starting to see what you can add to the world and add to a community and add to your environment in a different way. And you're really, I feel like moving forward on things in a way that feels more intimate and personal with you or to you in your life, Sag. I really feel like that's what this is about because these are intimate and personal part, parts of your chart if you're a Sag rising. And so things are gonna start feeling more intimate, more personal, you know, more on a personal level and you're gonna start wanting that connection a little bit more. And there's also gonna be this intense drive and focus on yourself too and what you want and what brings you joy and what brings you happiness. And so. So yeah, that is basically what I'm seeing here, Sag. Other than that, astrologically, uh, you know, we also have that Libra full moon on the 16th in your 11th house of uh, like uh, friends and, you know, people that you're associated with, networks and stuff like that, which also kind of brings this topic of friendship and, and networking in your social life in. And so I, I definitely think there are some things likely going on there this month or possibly some shifts or a lot of events or celebrations that you're attending with other people. Um, and then also we're going to have Mars move into Pisces in your fourth house, which is going to also bring even more of that home, family, personal life, you know, your your intimate connections in your, in your private life. Um, it's going to bring a lot of that up. And so there could be some changes happening in the home and family life uh, and changes in the way that you're connecting or something like that as well. So watch out for that. And then at the very end of the month, we have the solar eclipse in Taurus, which is your sixth house of work, day-to-day -day routines, health, all of those things. And so with this solar eclipse, there could be a massive change happening here, a massive new beginning coming in, like a, a massive blank slate happening where it's like, okay, I'm doing things completely brand new uh, in some way. And so that's going to happen at the very end of the month. So keep an eye out for that. So that is what I'm getting for you, Sagittarius, for the month of April 2022. Definitely let me know down below if this resonated. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. If any of these messages were yours. Thank you guys for watching this. If you'd like to keep up with me, my Instagram is linked down below. I also have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. And I also do one-on-one -on -one readings. So you can find all that down below. I will see you guys in my other videos. What's up Capricorn? Welcome to your April 2022 Tarot Astrology and Intuitive Reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. Let's get into April for you, shall we? So April 2022 Capricorn is 
a really big month. We start eclipse season. We have the first solar eclipse at the very end of April. We also have a lot of really amazing transits happening in Pisces. And then we start off April though with a little bit more of a heavier transit that you'll likely feel a little bit more than some of the other signs just because it involves your ruling planet Saturn and the planet of Mars meeting in the sign of Aquarius. And so this could somewhat look like having to let something go, decrease something, or move on from something that's very difficult in some way. It could feel a little bit like a contraction or having to move on past something that felt contracted or that felt, you know, difficult or like a struggle or stuck for a while. It's like, you know, the good news is though, is that it's like moving on from something that felt stuck or moving on from something that felt like it took so long, you know, whether it ended up working out or not, it's like you finally are able to move on from it. And that's kind of what I see here because we start off your, your cards with disappointment, the five of cups. And so it's kind of like maybe something didn't pan out the way that you thought it did, or maybe something didn't work out the way that you wanted it to, or maybe you're just frustrated with something or how something ended up turning out. But it's like now you can start moving forward with the two of wands. Now you can start planning for what comes next. Now you can finally move on from it, right? And it may involve like a change or a shift on your part in some way. It may involve like, you know, doing something different or taking action in a new way. But you now have the skills to do that with the magician here, right? You have the skills, you have the tools you need to do that. It's all in your priorities. You know what I mean? It's like really going for it, really changing your priorities, really seeing that you have the ability, you have what it takes to move on from this. And so, you know, you don't have to set yourself back. You didn't lose out on too much. You know what I mean? The five of cups is like, yeah, you know, two of the cups got knocked over, but there's three still standing, right? Like, so it's not like you lost everything, right? Um, if you did lose something or if you did lose out on something or if if there was some kind of disappointment, like it's not like everything is gone and you're completely effed, you know what I mean? Because you're not. Um, so other than that, though, we also have all this beautiful Piscean energy happening in your third house. So the creative ideas are flowing. The you know, connection to other people in your environment, your surroundings, maybe short travels, friends, going to events, making plans, doing all the things like in um, all the like places, people and things that you visit or deal with on a day to day basis, like are just really flowing, you know, with all this Piscean energy, it's like going to events or parties or concerts or being invited to different places, connecting with different people is going to be so, so big this month for you Capricorn and so you're really going to be in a place where you are wanting to have more fun where you're wanting to enjoy yourself more where you're wanting to relax a little bit more and you know do things that spark creativity or do things that make you feel good that make you feel fulfilled in some way and then we also have you know it's airy season so we also have a lot going on in your fourth house of your home, your family, your personal life, your private life. And so, you know, there's really like a light getting shined here. And so we could also start off the month where there may be some insecurities that are brought to your attention from your childhood, from your past, from your parents, from your family, some triggers or some old wounds that come up that need to be addressed. And for some of you, this could involve money, finances, pri like priorities, like what you have to offer in some way, because, you know, the ruler of Aries is Mars and Mars is conjunct Saturn in your second house, the beginning of the month around that same time. So it's kind of like you have the power here right? You can make shit happen. You have the power to decide how this is going to go. And this month is so crucial for decisions for you because we have the two of swords and the seven of cups, you know? So this month is really about your decisions, your choices, and how you're perceiving things, how you're moving forward with things and remembering the magic within you, remembering the tools that you have, what you've learned, how, how it's actually helped you instead of looking at it as just like a loss or like a failure or whatever the case may be. It's like, no, you have the fucking tools. You have the toolkit. It's all inside of you. You know what to do. You have the strategy, right? Like you have what it takes. You have the ingredients. You just need to learn how to mix them in a different way. You know what I mean? You just need to learn how to use them in a different way. And so I think that's really interesting here as well. We also have the Hierophant and the Star. And so I feel like you're really kind of your belief systems and the way that you're looking at the world, the way that you're looking at your place in the world is really changing uh, recently, Capricorn. It's like 
the way that you look at your future and what you want out of life is really changing your morals the way that you see things is really changing and and really like you know i i also feel like these two cards are kind of contradictory because the star oftentimes is associated with aquarius and the hierophant is more like you know religion and beliefs and rules and authority and then you know all of that patriarchy and so i kind of feel like you know this could also be you really going against the grain of what you've been told or what you've been taught going against the grain of your conditioning and realizing that your beliefs really fuel you and so you're you're at a place where you're ready to stand out where you're ready to follow your own soul and your own guidance rather than guidance from someone else you know and then we also have the sun here so it's like yeah you are seeing things in a whole different way you're becoming so much more aware of things you are becoming it's like you're you're healing on a lot of different levels this month i feel and it's like you're walking away from old dogmas and old structures and old conditioning that just does not work for you anymore and you're paying more attention to the inner child you're paying more attention to you know the things that actually call to you you know what i mean instead of trying to fit into this box and so it's almost like there's a purpose for why something didn't work out as you had planned because it's leading you in a new direction. It's the catalyst to get you to a place of seeing just how special you are and seeing just how like gifted and talented you are and showing you that you have other choices, that you have other options that you don't think that you did or that you didn't think that you did. So hopefully that makes sense, Capricorn. Hopefully that had some messages that you needed to hear. Uh, also at the very end of the month, we have the solar eclipse in Taurus, which is your fifth house on April 30th. So this is gonna be such a huge deal for you, Capricorn. Um, this is in your fifth house. And so this is gonna really be a massive shift, a massive change, a massive new beginning when it comes to what you love, your joy, your creativity, uh, sexuality, dating, children, love, romance, all of those like really beautiful things that bring you joy and abundance. It's like something is shifting majorly here. And then we also have a full moon mid month of April on the 16th in your 10th house, which is gonna be a massive shift in your career, your goals, your achievements, your future, where you're going in life, your path, etc. So watch out for that too. I'll be doing a separate video on that though. So thank you guys so, so much for watching Capricorn. Let me know down below if any of these messages were yours. Also, if you would like to keep up with me on Instagram, I post on there all the time everything's down below and then i also do one-on-one -on -one sessions if you are interested in that the link is down below as well and uh yeah i also have a patreon where i do exclusive content too so i love you guys i'll see you guys in my other videos bye hello aquarius and welcome to your april 2022 tarot astrology and intuitive reading for the month ahead i hope you guys are doing good so aquarius this month intuitively i feel that you are conquering a lot of fears you are moving through a lot of psychological and mental fears blockages that have been keeping you stuck or holding you back in some way it's like you've been trying to move forward or you're on the brink of something yet you still harbor these fears because it's so new it's so unknown it's like you are venturing into the unknown. That is exactly what it is. And you're like, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> and you're kind of just like waiting for the fear to go away. Or you're searching for an answer. Or you're trying to wait until you're all the way ready. But the thing is, is that fearlessness rarely ever exists. And it really reminds me of an Instagram post I just made the other day about some of this as well. Fearlessness rarely ever exists, right? Anytime there's a change, anytime you're on the brink of something, anytime you are ready to move forward, you're always going to have a certain level of fear. The thing is, is that you can't just wait around until you don't feel it because it's going to be there. There's always going to be that little like, well, what if and maybe not or I'm not sure or how's it gonna go or what's it gonna look like like there's always gonna be that little little voice in your head that's like wait a second <laughs> what are we doing like this is crazy right 
but you can't just wait around for the fear to go away because it's not going to. You're already feeling it. So you might as well just do it and get it over with, right? Like you might as well just step into whatever this is and get it over with because you're going to feel the fear either fucking way, right? You don't just get a random boost of courage and then you're like, yes, I can do this now. Like, no, like the courage comes. The courage is facing the fear with the fear right? The courage is the process of moving through the fear, even though it's there, right? And that is also how you gain confidence. That is also how you see what is on the other side. That is also how you find answers, how you find insight, how you find exactly what you are looking for. So the fear is the catalyst. It's like the medicine, you could even say. It's the medicine to get you to where you want to go. But it's uncomfortable. It's like going and taking ayahuasca, right? Like, it's going to be uncomfortable, but you want the healing, but you want the insight, but you want the answers, but you want to reach so far and deep inside of yourself to figure out what the hell is going on, or how do I move through this, or how can I heal through this, or what's next, whatever the case may be, right? And so that's kind of what I see here intuitively and in your tarot cards as well. It's like you are moving through something that is so unknown and you kind of feel with the fool here, like, well, what else do I have to lose? You know, like I'm at that point, I'm at that jumping off point, I'm at that cliff and I'm ready to go. And I don't know what's on the other side. I don't know if I'm gonna sink, swim, fail, float, whatever, right? I don't know if I'm gonna succeed, I don't know because it's so unknown, right? But we have the Nine of Swords. And so it's like, ooh, it's like anxiety or like keeping you up at night or like coming at you in your dreams where you're like having these nightmares or whatever the case may be, right? Like it's it's on your mind. And it's like, whoa. It's like you're about to go through such a major life change and you can fucking feel it, but you don't know where it's coming from. And so it's like, you're kind of like, it's kind of like you're almost constantly filled with anxiety or at least a little bit of anxiety or at least like a little knot in your stomach that's like, where am I going? What's happening? Oh my gosh, right? But at the same time, it's like, I have nothing else to lose. So this has to happen, right? Like I'm at this place of this new beginning. I'm ready to start fresh. I'm ready to take this new path. I'm ready to embark on this new journey. I'm ready to go into the unknown. I'm ready to lead myself into the unknown. But there's some fear. There's some anxiety, right? It's like you have a lot of fear or anxiety or, which I mean, anxiety is a form of fear, right? It's like a symptom of fear. But there's a little bit of a hesitation towards taking or embarking on some new journey, some new path. You're not sure where it's going to end up. But with the hermit here... You have wisdom leading you. It's wise. And I think you know it deep down. You have experience. Like all of the things that you've been through, they weren't just for no reason, right? All of the things that you've experienced up until this point will help be your guide on this journey. They will help light the way for you. While you embark on this journey to search for more answers, more meaning, more purpose, more awareness, more insight, more clarity, whatever it is. Or if you don't even know what you're you're embarking on this for yet, like you'll figure it out, but you have to take that first step. And I know it's scary. And I know it's like, am I doing this right? But it, it looks right, it feels right. It's like your soul is guiding you or calling you to something higher than yourself, higher than you can even understand at this moment or explain at this moment to many people. And we start off April with this energy. We have Mars and Saturn conjunct in your sign. This is like a major, major commitment. It's like go time, but it's like serious at the same time. It's like finally taking action towards something that's been feeling restricting or has been feeling heavy or that that you've been working on for a while or that's gonna take a lot of time, you know, it's like Saturn's there weighing it down in some way, but you're going for it. And it's like, this has to happen. This serious new beginning, like I have to do it. 
even though there's fear because it's so unknown. You're like, is someone going to catch me when I fall? But the you that you will turn into, the version of you will catch you. The version of you at the other end of this journey will catch you. That's who will catch you. So we also have the death card. And this once again tells me that you are in a very transformative time. This to me is like, oh my God, I just lost my job or I just quit my job and, and because I want to do this now. Or, oh my God, me and my significant other of years are breaking up and I don't know who the hell I am or what's going on or how this is going to work, but like it needs to happen like that kind of energy it's like you're on the edge and you're just like I don't know where this is going to land me I don't know where I'm going to end up it's like it, I don't even know but it has to happen right it's like so yeah it can be scary it can be nerve-wracking it can be like oh my gosh <laughs> or for some of you it may not be that intense for some of you it just may be a new beginning that you're stepping into or that you're being guided to step into but there are some fears holding you back you know it's a general reading, so I can't win them all, but I think you get what I mean. But this transformation is like a transformation into your true independence, into your true intelligence, into who you want to embody. It's like a transformation. This transformation is like closing a, a gap between the old you and the new you. It's like making it happen so much quicker, so much faster. So you can get out of this place of feeling mentally blocked or stuck, or so you can stop making excuses. So you can stop acting like, oh, well, because I can't see it, I can't trust it. It's gonna require a lot of trust. A lot of trust if so, in something higher than yourself or in just yourself, right? Either one. And it's going to require a lot of courage. It's going to require a lot of facing your fears with the strength card here. It's going to require a lot of being forged over and over again in the fires and coming out the other side with a sense of integrity, honor, confidence, empowerment, because you did this thing that seemed so scary and it's like, oh my God, if I can do that, I can do anything. Anything is possible. I am powerful. You come out with an extreme sense of wealth, with a sense of physical security, with a sense of feeling abundant within yourself. If you are willing to take this journey, if you are willing to face the fear, if you are willing to put yourself on the bridge and get to the other side of the bridge, you are rewarded with the Ace of Pentacles. It's yours if you really want it. So, that is what I see for you, Aquarius. Uh, other than that, astrologically, we do have a lot going on in your second house of money, finances, security, priorities, and there is just such an abundant energy coming in here for you with those things. We also have the Sun and Mercury traveling through Aries this month. And that is your third house, so this is a time of connecting, communication, your environment, and really getting clear about what you desire in your day-to-day -day life. Getting clear about how you speak to people, getting clear about embodying confidence and conversation. Getting clear about what needs to be said and speaking up. And then we have a solar eclipse at the very end of April, on April 30th, in your fourth house of home, family, your personal life, living situation. 
So there could be some stuff coming up there, a brand new beginning, a really big, possibly life-changing beginning happening in the home life at the very end of the month, so, or with family. So keep an eye out for that. But that is what I'm getting for you guys, Aquarius. Definitely let me know down below if this reading resonated, if any of these messages were your own, or you can come back and see if it resonates later on in the month. I'd love to hear about it, and I'd love to hear your experiences and your feedback. If you would like more from me, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I post on there a lot. I also have a website where I offer one-on-one -on -one sessions for astrology readings and spiritual coaching. Uh, and then I also have a Patreon where I do exclusive content. So if any of that sounds juicy to you, go check that out down below. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos. Bye. Hello Pisces and welcome to your April 2022 tarot, astrology, and intuitive reading for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well and I hope you guys had a great birthday season if you're a Pisces sun. But this reading may resonate a little bit more for Pisces rising. So do keep that in mind and make sure to watch all your signs just to be sure. So... Pisces, April is a month for you that is about money, honey. It is bringing up where in your life you need to get back on top of your priorities, where you need to start leading, where you need to start getting back into your confidence, getting back into your worth, getting back into your value and really seeing that and realizing that. Where have you been playing yourself short, you know? Could also be a month where you're feeling a little bit financially competitive to some extent as well. So do be careful of that as well. But it could feel like you're putting in all of this work, but maybe it doesn't get seen. Or maybe there's something going on behind the scenes or subconsciously, or there is something that is like going on, but you can't quite figure it out, right? It's like it, you, you want to be the leader, but you also want to help people. And so you're kind of stuck between like this more hard or more rigid energy versus a softer energy. And so you could be trying to figure out how to transition or how to integrate the two in some way, shape or form. And so April, I really feel is bringing this to a culmination point. But I do really love that Venus is moving into your sign around April 5th which is going to bring a sense of beauty, pleasure, more creativity, more fun, more friendship, more connection, more love into your life and into yourself. It's going to be a time where you're really focused on self-worth, self-pleasure, where you're really possibly wanting to change your style, where you're really wanting to just change your vibe and radiate your energy in a beautiful and creative way right? Where you're really wanting to feel more magnetic energetically. And so that is some really awesome news about April. But other than that, we start off the month with the Saturn Mars conjunction in your 12th. So it could feel like there's been something that has been feeling stagnant, stuck, or blocked. But maybe it's been hard for you to access, or maybe it's been somewhat subconscious, or maybe it's been like a pattern or a habit that you've just not been able to quite tap into or heal or break or whatever. Well, in the beginning of April, something breaks here. It's like something shifts or there's a change or it's like, I'm, I'm just going to have to do this. Or there's something that happens that's out of your control that shifts it, but some kind of energy shifts the beginning of April. And you start seeing where you've been maybe playing small or where you've been allowing old insecurities, old wounds, old shit to hold you back from really asserting yourself and asserting your, your worth, you know, from really seeing your worth or speaking in terms of what feels right to you, right? And so especially in terms of what you have to offer, money, finances, material things, but not just that, like, any innate talents or gifts that you have, right? It's like, what do you have? And so April is really bringing up these topics for you, Pisces. And so you can really notice this in the month of April. Now, on top of that, 
we have a lot of really beautiful alignments happening in your sign this month as Jupiter and Neptune will conjunct, Venus will join them. So it's going to get very, very dreamy and mystical this month, more than it's already been. <laughs> and we will have that uh, towards the beginning of the month and towards the end of the month. And so it's like, even though there may be something happening a little bit behind the scenes, it's like you are really starting to see your potential. You are really starting to expand. You are really starting to see the bigger picture for yourself, your life. It's like you're having these visions and you know what you want to create. You know what you want to bring into the world, but you're trying to figure out your power here with the emperor and the hermit. It's like you're looking for answers. Maybe some of you want to build a business. Maybe some of you want to be more in a leadership position. Maybe some of you want to do your own thing, right? Make your own rules, whatever the case may be. It's like you're really looking and researching for answers. And it could feel like the effort that you're putting in is kind of in the dark right now. Or maybe you are working on something behind the scenes, you know? But it's like you are... You are ready to step into that confidence and to start taking action in the month of April. Mars will move into your sign on the 14th, so right in the middle of the month, and that is when I think things really start to take off for you. And you have a smooth transition with the Six of Swords here out of this energy where you've been healing and you've been letting go and you've been releasing and you've been letting go of blocks and you have this smooth transition into fulfillment, emotional fulfillment, creativity, going after what you want, six of wands, success, feeling fired up, feeling excited, moving forward with your desires. And then queen of swords, independence, learning and using your intelligence along the way feeling like you have this you know emotional spiritual mental it's like yes and this starts you on a brand new path where you are fully ready to start this new life to start this new journey you are a whole new you and it feels fucking good because for a while, if you're a Pisces rising, there's been a lot of isolation, seclusion, depression with all of this shit happening in Aquarius in your 12th house. And so it's like, I am fucking free. I can breathe like, oh my gosh, it's here. I'm here. I've arrived. Like this is happening. It's like you feel fresh. You feel clean. It feels like, oh my gosh anything's possible. Like I can do this. And it goes from there. And so you are about to embark on a new journey, Pisces. And it's one of fulfillment, abundance, expansion. It may feel so, 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 so big. For some of you, it may feel bigger than anything you've ever done before. And it's like, you're ready. You're tapping into the miracles of this energy right now, which is excellent, which is amazing, which is great. Everybody should be tapping into the miracles of this energy. Jupiter moves into Aries next month. So we only have April left of Jupiter and Pisces. So soak it up. It'll retrograde back in like towards the end of the year for a couple months, but it'll be retrograde and it won't spend very long there. So Soak it up while you can with Jupiter in your sign, your ruling planet in your sign. Anything is possible. Manifest the F out of what you want right now. Do not let this opportunity pass you because it's like one of the best transits that, we, that we've had in a long time. So anyways, towards the end of the month, we have a solar eclipse in Taurus, which is your third house Pisces. So this is really going to bring up where you need to speak your truth where there may be certain things in your surroundings and your environment that need to be done or things on a day-to-day -day basis. This could be a whole new beginning happening in terms of your skills, what you're learning, what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, announcing something or, you know, bringing something out into the open. It's going to be interesting and it's going to be big. 
Let me know down below, Pisces, if this reading resonated, if there were any messages in here for you. I'd really, really love to know. And that is all for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you would like more from me, see the description below. I do one-on-one -on -one services. I have an Instagram where I post all the time. I have a Patreon where I post exclusive content with even more detail and depth and all of that. So if you'd like to keep up with me, make sure to check those out. I love you guys and I will see you guys in my other videos.